Welcome to another episode of the Soothing Semantics podcast. My name is Rafi Pinsky, and I am doing the 176th episode. We're, we're really getting close to 200 episodes here. And my good friend Anton came to me, and he wanted to cover anti-Semitic incidents that are being Welcome. experienced by college students, the Jewish college students in New York. So I have two young gentlemen, Isaac and Gabriel, and they wanted to give their experience. They wanted to share their experience on the Soothing Semantics podcast. So, uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining me. We'll start with we'll start with Isaac. We're going to go into the entire uh, anti-Semitic situation, but give us a little bit of a background on on who you are and and what you're what you're doing in school, essentially. Okay, definitely. So, um, I just finished my junior year at Yeshiva University. I'm at SISEM School of Business. I'm majoring in finance and minoring in real estate finance. And basically, you know, I'm just learning as much and networking as much as I can in, in college and school and to prepare myself uh, for when I graduate to make sure I graduate with a job and basically to survive the uh, outside world as best as I can, you know. And uh, really, uh, why finance? Because uh, I'm a numbers guy. I analyze everything basically even stuff that's not uh financial like financially related or finance like it could be anything i just like i've just analyzed it i have that analytic mindset and um it's really i just drawn to it and really uh you know you have to do what you love in life and not worry about the money so much because if you do things just for the money you're not going to be happy and you're going to be depressed so really advice that i've gotten from a lot of people and mentors do what you love and things will work out at the end for the best. I think that's very sound advice, man. I, I follow that. I follow that train of thought 100%, 100%. I, I could not agree more with you. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. We're going to, we're going to come back to you. So Gabriel, give us, give us the background on you. Yeah. So my name is Gabriel. I'm from California. I'm going into my senior year at Shiva university. I'm currently studying marketing and strategy. Um, I want to do pre-law afterwards and I really want to make like a change in this world, help people in any way that I can, help people grow, be happier and help them become better people. Uh, through school, just like some of the keys that I've gotten are just like networking, being able to meet a lot of different people and just like, experiences, being able to do whatever I can um, and just it's been a really amazing experience so far and so I'm looking forward to my senior year next year. That's awesome, man. Yeah, the college the college days are, are, are definitely going to be the most, some of the most memorable uh you know days weeks months and years you're gonna have absolutely yeah, high school right. high school too is hopefully a good time i had a blast yeah. in high school but college was uh was a major part of my life so i i have a ton of respect for you guys i know you guys are gonna make a big den in the world it's not a not not such a surprise that young jewish guys come to make a, a really big impact on the world in a positive way although nowadays there's a lot of people that would say otherwise and we're having this podcast together to discuss why Jewish people do what we do in terms of the impact we make on a daily basis. And aside from the impressive things you guys are doing in school, I do want to obviously get into the experience you guys are having on campuses. So Isaac, you can go first. Tell us what has, what has transpired since October 7th in terms of your experiences in, in Yeshiva University in New York, you know, in terms of anti-Semitic incidents? Definitely. I mean, when it comes to Yeshiva University, you are living in a bubble, uh, definitely for October 7th, because uh, there is there was no anti-Semitism there. Any people, even people who live in the area in Washington Heights uh, were not anti-Semitic after October 7th, where they never they were never to begin with. Also, uh, there was no protest. You go to Yeshiva University, you don't even see one Palestinian flag. However, security did ramp up. There is more security now at Yeshiva University, which makes us feel safe, which is good. But the problem is, when you're living in a bubble, when you get out of that bubble, which means basically, because the campus is five blocks, so as soon as you get out, you really uh, see all that anti-Semitism when it comes in the subway, uh, seeing friends in other college campuses like Columbia University, New York University, and it's like a big, uh, it's a really big punch in the stomach because like I lived in New York all my life 
And I never had a problem wearing a kippah on the subway. I never had a problem being Jewish, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, in America, you have freedom of religion, you know, and really no one should attack you because you're Jewish or because you're Christian or because you're Muslim, you know? And after October 7th, it's, you know, you've been, I, I've been more afraid to go out, to see my friends in all the other college campuses. I have a friend in Columbia University. Uh, and then I just didn't see him as much because of the encampment and all the protests. It's just going there, you're afraid that someone may spot you and say, oh, look, a Jew, let's go beat him up or something like that. You know, you have this, it's this fear. And really, you have to learn how to, how do you react to the fear and how you deal with that type of fear of anti-Semitism in New York City? So, like, I know people that they take off their kippah when they go to the subway now. They try not to do things that somehow may look Jewish. If, if there's a penny that drops in, you know, in, in any of the stations, they're like, you know, I better not pick that up. Don't pick it up. <laughs> yeah. a Anton, ha Anton, see, Anton has a tough time. See, Anton's in the yeah. background. Don't even look at the penny. Don't look at the penny. Uh, yes, Just... Like Look at the quarter yeah, or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you know? or, or I want to pick it up so bad, but I don't want I don't yeah. want the answer to submit a comment. <laughs> ah, you know? Just... I mean, I can tell you a story yeah. that um, me and my friend, we we're going to see a uh, Brooklyn Nets game at Barclays Center, right? And we we're taking the two train downtown uh, from Manhattan to go to uh, Brooklyn and we we're going to transfer. And basically this guy, my friend, he was wearing a kippah and a guy, he came on the, on the subway he spotted my friend. He started like attacking my friend, like verbally attacking, screaming at him, talking that he's a murderer, genocide, talking about the, the war in Israel. He was talking about like the Holocaust and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And like a really heated argument. I mean, you couldn't really, when it comes to people like that who are either mentally ill or crazy or just plain brainwashed, uh, it's try really not to react, try to ignore them and just yeah. let them vent out. And that's really like abuse, verbal abuse, where you don't do anything. You just sit there and like put your head down like that and let them just attack you verbally. And, you know, you hear all this anti-Semitic you know, stuff and you're doing, and, you know, you live, you live in New York City and you're hearing all this type of abuse for what? Because you're Jewish? You know, we're human beings, man. I just, you know, I go to college, I study, I work hard, uh, try to make a living. I'm not bothering anybody or doing anything wrong i mean you know like that's... what about your your parents uh, contribution in america with the, the singular fig business oh yeah so singular the only one so, you know, yeah. Incredible. yeah so uh basically uh my parents have a small distillery in yonkers where we make craft whiskey rye bourbon and we make a spirit it's an eau de vie 100 percent from figs called Mahia, which is a Moroccan spirit. And my dad's mm -hmm. from Morocco. And his family, for like the last 500 years, were making this product called Mahia, which is uh, a fig liquor. And in Morocco, it's a Muslim country. They're, they don't, the Muslims, they don't manufacture alcohol, obviously. But um, I would like to tell you something about Morocco, that the Jews in Morocco were treated fairly well compared to every other country uh, in the world uh, during the, you know, during the diaspora. And you have Moroccans who are Muslim and everything, and they support Jews, and it's cool. It, there's no and really so much anti-Semitism when it comes to like Moroccans. You know, my father has a lot of Moroccan Muslim friends, and mm -hmm. they don't see, oh, the Jew or this or that. You know, it's, it's when it comes to like Morocco, and Moroccans are very like cool. It's not like uh, you have uh, fanatics there and stuff like that. So it's, it's a little bit different compared to like Iraq, where in the 30s, they killed so many Jews and they, you know, basically pushed the Jews out of Iraq. Hmm. You know, they were so anti-Semitic. Wow. The king of Morocco, um, uh, the king of Morocco was at the time, I think it was uh, Mohammed V, if I'm not mistaken. You know, the Germans came to Morocco and the SS came to Morocco and they came to the king of Morocco. They tell them, give us the names and a list of the Jews in the country. Mm -hmm. And he told them, no, Jews, right. these Jews are Moroccans. They're the Moroccan people. You understand? Yep. So he didn't give up the Jews. There you know, were, completely. but there no. were, there were, there were persecutions, maybe not during that period, but there were persecutions oh, in sure. Fez, 
Yeah, it wasn't like the Moroccan Jews were safe throughout history. This no, was something very not. important. So to, yeah. I de- yeah. Compare it to compare yeah. to yeah. other it's Muslim countries. Yeah, it's very scary. I mean, compared to other Muslim countries, um, it wasn't, I guess it wasn't as bad, but there was definitely persecution and pogroms in Morocco. It's not like uh, yeah. it was a safe haven. Yeah. Because yeah. after Israel was created, uh, so much, so many, all basically all the Moroccan Jews went to Israel or, right. or Canada or the United States. Uh, you know, because after the Six Day War, a lot of uh, it became a lot more anti Semitic. That's what, you know, my father was telling me because he grew right. up in Morocco in the 60s and in, in the 70s. So a lot of people just wanted to leave, Jews wanted to leave Morocco because after the Six Day War, it just like your neighbor who you would, you know, have tea with after the Six Day War would look at you differently, would hate you, doesn't want to have tea with you. You know what I mean? So like they, they right. felt that and the Jews w- left, basically. And now you have only a couple thousand Jews, not even in, uh, in uh, Morocco, in Casablanca. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So let okay. So let's get back. Let's get back to the to the campus thing. Let's let's yeah, uh, yeah. move back into that direction. In terms of in terms of the trains, when you're going on the subway, is it commonplace to see people wearing kafias when you're walking around? Are they just everywhere? Is do you feel like you can't wear a kippa anymore? It's very scary. Yeah, because just like you wear the kippa and people give you strange looks. Um, they kind of, for example, when I was walking one time, just like this guy just walks right into me. He sees my kippa and just like he starts coming closer to me as I'm walking, and it's just kind of scary. You feel threatened, and just like when you're in groups of people, like that kind of helps. Uh, groups of friends, but it's a very scary situation to be in, and just like a lot of people, like especially right now, they're looking down on you, like if you're Jewish. Um, and it's just very scary so to be extra cautious. Oh, definitely. I mean, and when, let's say if they're having a big protest or something in the city, you mm-hmm. will see people with kafiyas uh, on the subway. You know, um, yeah. definitely like November, Dece- like November, December, January, you would see, even if there wasn't a protest, um, you would see people wearing kafiyas. You would like not, you know, just either like on their, you know, on their shoulders, whatever, or some of them would wrap them around. And most of these people are white americans not even muslim not Mm -hmm. have no affiliation with anything muslim or arab these are just like white woke people who are wearing kafia thinking that they're supporting a cause or or something that's like meaningful or that's the right thing or freedom fighters because you know it's like you look at vietnam the vietnam war you have people protesting the war whatever and that was americans protesting an american war and now people think because of this, um, what's going on in Israel and the war and everything, they think it's like, you know, like Vietnam, the hippie movement, let's go protest a war. Let's yeah. go call these people colonizers and everything. Because in New York, which is a very liberal city and has very woke people, a lot of woke people and the woke culture is everywhere. You know, you have, as soon as you give them an opportunity, it doesn't matter if it's the wrong thing, what they're doing. They're just doing it because mm-hmm. that's what they always wanted to do. It's like their dream to go into protest. It's their dream to go and call people colonizers and this and that. So, you okay, know? so I have a question. I have a question. Mind you, I'm I'm a pretty right-wing guy, meaning I'm, I'm a conservative and I'm also a very, quite a Zionist. But I want to play devil's advocate here. Why do you think, why do you think these people, these woke protesters are focusing on Israel so much and not, let's say, uh, protesting about Sudan or about Syria, Yemen. Why are they so fixated on Israel? Why is that their focus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, number one, I just feel like a lot of people are uneducated on the topic. And it's kind of like they don't have the facts down properly. They don't really know what they're talking about. They don't know the whole story. And if they did, that would help things greatly. Yeah, I mean, uh, so money they're getting paid by for sure for sure so what would you i think what it is is that people they you know they give people money to go and protest to go do these things to go and brainwash and educate people i mean you have um uh bds they go to college campuses and they start talking you know basically saying all these lies and Mm -hmm. fake things to people who you know to americans that are just well, like learning about it campus, they show up or have you seen this or yeah, yeah they just show up they show up and, and still leave like, examples yeah like, i know let's say you're an average student you know you're not liking your classes and then you have some group yeah. that you know that's that's yelling you know the shit what, what does it what does it look like this is- i mean like let's say like college fairs or like like um club you know, fairs recently Gra- yeah uh, graduations you have people wearing yeah. um a Palestinian protest, flag a sash. guys let's yeah. just keep and one one voice at a time one voice at a time yeah go ahead isaac yeah for sure so like 
uh, basically, um, like let's say for example, BDS, they would go to, let's say you have a club fair in college. They would like put a stand there and they would like basically say all these lies and try to like, it's basically brainwashing, telling these people all these, these fake stuff about Israel and that they do this and they do that and they hurt people and they're, they're colonizers and these, they don't know anything of what's going on. It's not like you have another booth about um, Israelis talking about, you know, what's really going on, the truth and anything. So they only hear one side, mm -hmm. you know, they only have one, you know, one version. Yeah. You know, and that's basically it. And then when it comes to like why they protesting, why Israel is getting all this attention is because you have all these pro-Palestinian people, let's say in New York City, they go and they protest, you know, day one, they bring people, they feed them lies and everything. And a lot of people are gullible. You have woke people. You give them a chance to protest about white colonizers and stuff like that. They say, "Why not? Let me go make. Let me go paint a sign." So let's let's play devil's advocate. Let's let's play okay. devil's advocate a bit because you say, you say, okay, people don't know what they're talking about. So let's say I came to you as a pro-Palestinian and I said, "Well, you know, I've been studying this for the last six months," and you said, "Okay, well, you don't really know what's going on." So what would you say to them? to make your point because if you're saying they don't know what they're talking about then where do you i mean you know, it's just simply ahead. educating them on the history uh of israel and mm -hmm. you know that the jews were there for two thousand years ago there's evidence there's artifacts Religion. i mean you look at 1948 how the palestinians and from 1948 till now they've been trying they tried to do many peace deals with the palestinians and two-state solutions i mean you look at the oslo accords mm -hmm. in 93 and and you look at you know and other stuff like and Camp David's Accords and everything, and really it's you have just the Palestinians, you know, rejecting a deal after a deal of a two-state solution. There's so many people that they had no idea that Israel left in 2006 in Gaza. Mm. You know, when you oh, they, yeah, that's Israel. oh, that's for sure. There's so they don't know any of these fine details. Ninety-nine yeah, percent yeah. of so people. It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. simple. It's very simple. You just educate them on yeah. history, mm -hmm. and then they start thinking. Yeah. You know, because really, the Palestinians, they don't want these American college students to think. Because as soon as you think, you realize that the Palestinians are feeding these people lies. And pro-Palestinian people are brainwashing these, you know, these, you know, uh, poor, un unfortunate people that are believing all this stuff, which is very unfortunate, you know? The thing yeah, is, I'm just going to interject. Yeah, go ahead, Gabriel. What were you saying? Yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, if there were classes that could kind of educate people, people going to college campuses and helping people realize these facts that would be very important. So let's let's bring it back. What I'm what I what I'm going to say is is people are going to think the way they think and <laughs> Jews Jews need to focus a lot more. Jewish people one thing I'm I'm I've I've noticed very quickly is that Jewish people need to stop trying so hard to prove their points to the world. They need to instead state their points very strongly and stand on them. And so what I'm going to say is to the both of you, my suggestion to you, I'm not the, the most, I'm not a very religious person. I'm an extremely proud Jew. I think uh, Anton probably told you I was in the army. So for me, I don't, I don't wear a kippah just because I'm not necessarily practicing. So I feel, you know, and I, I wearing a kippah could be a sense of pride. I could do that, but that's just how I've, I've, I've seen it, you know, just as someone who doesn't really do the day to day so much. But in terms sure, of yeah. going, in terms of going to New York, I, I feel like the next time I'm in New York, I want to wear a kippa just because. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. what I would say, you'll, uh, what I you'll would get some uh, reactions for sure. Yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm fine with that. What I would say, what I would say to you guys is, don't be afraid to wear your kippas, your kippot. And if you need to walk around with a, uh, you know, some more people to feel safer, so be it. Jews need oh. to lean into their Judaism now and not not be afraid of it. The truth of the matter is liberals do not typically, we were talking about, you know, staunch liberals don't believe in the idea of merit. They don't believe in the idea of capitalism. They believe that everyone should get, should have everything equally. And so they are at war against capitalistic ideas. So when it comes down to white people, they believe that they have everything and everyone else is scavenging for, for the rest and so even though Jews are a minority, they're a, su a successful minority. So they don't feel bad for us. If we were suffering, maybe that would be different. But because Jews are doing exceptionally well in proportion to their numbers, especially in the United States and even more so in New York, 
they see us as the problem as a, as opposed to the contributors contributors of much of New York. I mean, New York, yeah. the success of New York, you can go yeah. across the board. So at the end of the day, it's kind of a futile effort to try to change people's minds. What I think is more important as a Jew is, is being very outspoken. And then you can do that however you want to. You can do that on, on a smaller level, on a larger scale. I'm not telling you to endanger your life if you're not someone who's uh, confrontational, then don't be. You know, I, I think that everybody should be willing to stand up for themselves and, and other people. But if you're somebody who really doesn't like confrontation, OK, you can get it. You can go and, and write articles. You can organize events. You can do whatever you feel is, is, is a contribution. Not everybody has to go out and fight physically. Uh, so that's really what it is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, like, I just want to say, like, one thing that this whole thing has caused is that Jewish people, we're all together, like, are strong people. Definitely. And, and it's all, all come together. And it's a beautiful thing. It's yeah. Just, you have to stay focused. Like, you people are jealous together. of that. People are very jealous and of that. And hopefully, they, you know, to stay stronger and to be more united after this, um, you know, what's going on and after this horrible war, hopefully when, you know, when there's peace again, and hopefully there will be peace very soon. Uh, we'll just get even more uh, united as a people, and hopefully Everyone. everyone around the world will realize uh, the truth. Guys, let's let's uh, wrap this up. Gabriel, I'm sorry we didn't uh, give you more time on the floor. You know, Isaac Isaac had plenty to say. Anton had. All right. had I'm, a, I'm a yapper. Sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could do yeah. maybe we can do something again in the future because uh, I feel bad he didn't get that much talking time. But gentlemen, I I, I really enjoyed my time. And uh, I'm happy that my viewers got the opportunity to listen to, to the both of you and Anton as well. <laughs> so, yeah. so thank you guys so much for coming and uh, keep, being, keep being proud of who you are. Keep doing yeah, your job. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank yeah. you for the Absolutely. opportunity. For what you're doing. Yeah, Absolutely. So I'm just going to close it out. Obviously, for any of your, your uh, spirits and whiskey needs, you can go to remind me of the the website. Give you can give us a little bit of a sure. Um, Namiasfeast.com, which is French for Namias and Sons. Uh, Namiasfeast.com. You go on the website. You can see all our products, and we also have a service for private labeling. So as I mentioned before, like if you want to make your own product, your own vodka, we can do that for you. And yeah, it's a really great time. We do tours and tasting. So uh, come on by. Now. swag on everybody get ready now let's have some fun yeah. it's about to get started oh, yeah. three two one it's time to celebrate you know what feeling you great yeah. all night all day yeah it's time to celebrate celebrate it's time to celebrate Sorry, Isaac and Gabriel, thank you guys so much. This has been another episode of the Soothing Semantics podcast. Of course, ladies and gents, for all of your real estate needs in South Florida, you know who to call. Make sure to check out my newsletter. Follow me at Rafi the Realtor. Going to attach uh, Isaac's family's distillery link, website link in the description. So make sure to check it out. Support them. And I will see you on the next episode.